If you're a foreigner living in Ukraine, just like me, or are thinking to move to Ukraine, I'm sure you thought at least once, how can I buy an apartment or a house in Ukraine? Because owning a property in the country where you move, this is the ultimate goal. Plus, you might not be able to afford actually an apartment or a house in your home country because it is so expensive. So in this video, I wanted to dig deeper into how expensive is an apartment in Ukraine, how does it really look like, and does it make sense to buy something here in terms of comfort and all the amenities that an Ukrainian apartment is going to offer you. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Elena and I have been living in Ukraine for the last two years and a half. A couple of months ago, me and my husband started thinking about owning an apartment in Ukraine. We have been so tired of living in rented apartments and having things that we don't like like this ugly wallpaper that is behind me. But because it's a rented apartment, you don't have the power to change almost anything in those apartments. So we decided because we are living in Ukraine, probably there is a higher chance that we could actually afford an apartment here, which I'm pretty sure is something that you have been thinking. So the first step here is really to figure out whether you want an apartment from a new apartment building or from the owner, which means an older apartment building. We went with the former for a couple of reasons. First of all, we really wanted a brand new apartment uh, built by new standards with new piping, new uh, air shafts, uh, a good heating system, and all those things that make your living just much more comfortable. Secondly, from a legal standpoint, and I think this is really important for you as a foreigner, it's much easier and much simpler to do a contract with the builder. It's really straightforward. There is a great website and app called loon.ua where you can see all the new apartment buildings and make up your mind in terms of you want a studio apartment, a three bedroom apartment, an apartment with the view of the sea or the view of the park, or maybe just in the city center so you can have great access to uh, the historical center to the bars and the restaurants there. A great resource to help you visit the apartments and explain you a little bit more about the builder and the conditions and the terms of the payment is having an agent. You will probably say an agent sounds a little bit expensive. I'm not sure I want to spend the money. And the good news is if you're buying an apartment from the builder, the commission to the agent is paid directly from the builder. It's actually in their marketing budget. The fact that you have or don't have an agent doesn't influence your price at all, but definitely gives you an advantage of having a person who is on your side and would advise you whether it makes sense to buy an apartment from one builder or the other, depending on the conditions. Things like the reputation of the builder, whether they have a good you know, history of uh, building apartments in time, whether they can give you a discount and how much, or maybe they will allow you to pay uh, the price of your apartment uh, during a longer period of time. Those are all questions that only a good agent can tell you. Agent will take you to different apartment buildings and you know drive you around in their car if you don't have a car like us. It was really comfortable to have somebody pick you up and show you the apartments. So let me actually show you all apartments in the order that we saw them with the comments so you can make sure you know you know how apartments look like. The first apartment that we saw was in a Condor building. It's called the 51st Pearl. This is a very popular apartment building from this builder. It was a two bedroom apartment, 64 square meters. And in terms of price, a little bit over $60,000. So um, I really like this apartment. As many Condor apartments, it has a separate uh, toilet and bathroom. And in fact, both of them were pretty spacious, so we thought one of them could be the toilet and the bathroom, and the other one could be our laundry room slash the cloakroom. 
Eugene is here in uh, the kitchen. Overall, the kitchen was very well lit. The window was not too big, but also the kitchen in terms of square footage was not too big, and I absolutely love the high rises view. The only problem that I had with the room was the um, uh, vent pipe that went inside of the kitchen and created this weird shape, so if you bought the apartment, you'd have to work around it. Now, one of the rooms has a balcony, and we thought this would be a very good candidate for the living room. First of all, because it's near the kitchen. Second of all, because if guests come, they could go on a balcony and admire the view. The second apartment was a three bedroom apartment, 90 square meters, 79,000 uh, US dollars. This is very similar to the first one, but they had this additional very big room. If you ask me, I felt that the big room did not have enough light because the window was too small and the room had an elongated shape. Otherwise, uh, the second room and the third room that had a balcony were very well lit. Again, rectangular shape, very good planning. This apartment was on the fifth floor and there was a construction site going on. This is very common in Arcadia where you have new buildings being built everywhere. Once they do finish the construction, that would be a really comfortable place to live in without any dark, dirt or um, you know, annoying sounds from the builders. The apartment that we really liked was in the 42nd Pearl, and at this point you probably understand that all of Kador's buildings are called Pearls or Zemchujna. This was 93 square meters and costed 76,000 uh, US dollars. Unfortunately, this was an apartment from the owner, not from the builder, so we had to pay all the money up front and obviously we didn't have the amount ready. What I liked about this apartment is that it had a corridor and at the opposite side of the corridors were two bathrooms. So one of them could be used by us and the other one by our guests. They had three separate rooms with this big panoramic windows. There was so much light in the apartment. In the video, really, you can't tell, but you know, I've been there and I'm telling you, it was, it was full of light. Uh, three separate rooms, all kind of similar all in this rectangular shape, very good planning. The only thing that I didn't like was the construction site going on in front of the building. This was a frozen construction site, so the builder didn't get all the documents in order. And with frozen construction sites, you really don't know what's gonna happen. So you might be looking at this construction site for years. So this is the second bathroom that I was talking to you about. Because it's near the kitchen, we can make it the bathroom for the guests. And finally, the kitchen. Again, standard, this is the smallest window in the house, but again, I won't be spending too much time in the kitchen, so that's fine. 26 Pearl, another of Cador's buildings. This one, honestly, I did not like. My biggest problem with this was the trapezy shape of the rooms. They were not rectangular, they were more narrow near the window and wider towards the opposite wall. And this created the illusion that the room was collapsing on you like it was shrinking on you. Again, look at this great window and what do we see in front of the window? There is a wall that eats up pretty much, you know, to one third of the light that the window is giving. Plus, I don't know what we can hide behind the wall. So overall, very, very strange plan. So one more room and uh, then the toilet and the bathroom, they are separate. Here I saw the smallest toilet in my life. I can hardly fit in there. Like what's the point in making separate toilet and bathroom if the toilet is so tiny? And this is the kitchen here. I saw the kitchen because it was small, it was actually okay. Overall, very bad plan, would not recommend. The last apartment in Kador, which probably wins the prize for the worst apartment uh, that we saw, is this 103 square meter apartment. If you were to ask me, I think those square meters are just wasted on this apartment. It's on the fifth floor, um, so it, it naturally doesn't get as much light because there are buildings. Uh, but also you can see the walls in between the window and the room. The rooms are all very long you know, elongated shape, tiny windows, and in between the window and the room, there's an additional wall that eats up the light. I just do not understand the logic of this apartment. Big apartment, very expensive, 
from the builder, but it would be way too dark to live in here. The funny thing is uh, the corridor itself is 15 square meters. So it's basically like having a room <laughs> in the corridor. It has a big bathroom. And again, this tiny, teeny weeny toilet, like who is gonna fit in there? I uh, like, <laughs> I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed. It's an expensive apartment. They should have done better. Um, probably this is because of the shape of the building. It's shaped like a wave, so they had to work around the shape. But again, like this is no excuse. And I totally understand why this building is still not sold because, you know, it's just, it's just that bad. a building in construction and we had to uh, go up 14 floors on foot because they still haven't had their lift from Europe installed in the buildings and we still have to go up to the 24th floor. This is kind of crazy. The other builder that we saw is Gefest and the building was called Acropolis. They have a completely different approach to building. First of all, they take their time compared to Cador, but they try to turn up a better quality of construction. This specific apartment was going for 80,600 US dollars for 78 square meters, so more expensive than the ones in Cador. Also a thing with this developer is that they provide open plans for the apartment. So none of the interior walls will be ready when they sell the apartment. And pardon the trash, um, the building is still in active construction and they are one of the few companies that actually allow you to visit the construction site uh, during the lunch break when the workers are not here. So the apartment had three big windows and one big balcony from one of the windows, which means that you would have the possibility to build probably a maximum of three rooms, you know, each room having their separate window. Uh, we went up to the 24th floor where we saw two more apartments and I'm sorry if I don't have as many details um, as before for the apartment. The visit was <laughs> a little bit in haze. We were running across different floors and, you know, taking bits and pieces of information. This would be probably one of the more confusing visits that I had visiting apartments. We had to kind of fact check with the realtor after that to make sure we got all the information correctly. So on this floor, we saw the apartment that we liked more. It was a little bit bigger in terms of square footage than the previous one. Again, open plan. Mm, so this was 80 square meters. I was going for $82,000. I liked that it was a corner apartment and it had windows on two of the walls. So the one that you see right in front of you is also a balcony. And this could be, you know, our bedroom or Eugene's office where we can go and enjoy the view from the balcony. The other window was a panoramic window, really nice. This could be again, a bedroom, for example. And then the window near which Eugene is standing, this will be probably a studio kitchen and living room together just to make use of this amazing view. Acropolis definitely has an amazing view. You can see the city of Odessa in detail and you can also see a little bit of uh, the Black Sea. So 10 out of 10 for the view. And finally, you're going to the last apartment. This apartment seemed overpriced because it was very similar to the first apartment that we saw, just a little bit uh, bigger, and it had two balconies. Well, this, this could explain the extra price, 82 square meters, but $87,000, that's, that's a lot. 
So if I'm not mistaken, this is the apartment, the yellow apartment on the right. So three rooms, three windows, and two of them have balconies. So in between, there's this panoramic window, and here you have the second balcony. Again, as I mentioned, it's super messy, but only because it's an active construction. Actually, I saw one uh, busy worker that was working during his lunch break, trying to finish the building in time, no doubt. But look at this view, amazing. The last, but definitely not the least in terms of quality and the prettiness of the apartment is Dan Min with its new apartment complex called Elegia Park. I really love this apartment complex. The first apartment that we saw was 66 square meters and uh, 68,000 US dollars. The views from this apartment are just fantastic. Uh, the building in front of us, this is another one of Elegia Park's buildings. Overall, there are three buildings, and to the right and to the left, those are new GFS buildings. The quality of the apartment was really nice. We have a separate toilet and bathroom, and also a cloakroom here where the gentleman was standing. And this room is the kitchen. I think this builder really understands the importance of having in love light in your room. This one here is a small balcony called a French balcony and it's used to store the AC. The second room that we saw was pretty much the copy of the first, first apartment, with the only exception that this one did not have a cloakroom, which is a big minus if you ask me. I'd rather pay for three extra square meters but have a place where to put my clothes and my luggages and my shoes and whatnot. Again, amazing view from the window. So one of the rooms had this panoramic window. And then the other room had this amazing balcony. The view from the balcony, I, I personally really liked. I know that a lot of people from Odessa don't like looking at other high rises, but for me, it's not a problem because I live in a city and I want it to look like a city. and the same sunlit gorgeous kitchen. I can definitely imagine myself spending some time here, uh, cooking, drinking some tea, you know, it's really a place where I would like to spend some time, what can I say? Buying an apartment is a very emotional thing too. And I really wanted to show you a little bit of their interior courtyard. Their concept is called courtyard without cars. And for me as a pedestrian, this is really important to have a place where I can walk without the threat of being hit by a car. Finally, the last apartment is also a two bedroom apartment, but 73 square meters and as such 73,000 US dollars. It had rooms on both sides of the building. This is a toilet. And then you go into the kitchen. It has a balcony and a smaller window, which I think is fine. And then both of the bedrooms have panoramic windows. Um, this is uh, the toilet and the bathroom. They're pretty spacious and separate. You can definitely fit a bathtub in here. And yeah, the second room identical to the first one. Great panoramic view. I can, I can definitely fall in love with each one of these apartments. Mm -hmm. The only minus is they were a little bit tight in terms of square meters. I would have liked more. So hopefully by now you have decided on which apartment you want to buy and you need to do the last thing is sign the contract. So just to make sure that nobody buys the apartment before you, there is a service called Booking where you book the apartment for two or three days. It's off the market. Nobody else buys it. And it gives you some time to kind of think and get your money situation in order.
So when this two, three days expire, you have to, if you still want the apartment, you have to go to the builder's office with two things. First of all, the documents, and second of all, the money. So let's start with the documents. One of the documents that you need is your passport. You should have it with you with a legal entry of Ukraine. The second thing, if you're here for the long time, and this is optional because if you're not for a long time, you would probably not have it, is a local residence permit. If you don't, you know, don't worry about it. And the second thing, which is also mandatory, is this uh, taxpayer's card. Uh, you get it in about, I think, two weeks, so you have to apply it for it and you'll get it in two weeks' time. So if you're sure that you want to initiate the purchasing of an apartment process, get it in advance, you would hate for somebody to snatch your apartment while you're getting this information. And uh, the second, um, thing that nobody wants to part with others beautiful dollars so there are a couple of options in order uh, to pay the first amount of money you can either pay 10% of the deposit 30 50 or 100 I mean the amounts could differ from builder to builder but I think those are pretty popular uh, if you pay 100% of the price the apartment would cost you less overall if you pay only 10% of the deposit upfront and the way the builder explains it is that they're actually making you a discount if you're paying all the money up front. Well, you know, discount or not, just make sure that you're okay with the total uh, amount of money that you're paying for the whole apartment. And I would say try to maximize the amount that you pay up front. The remaining amount is uh, paid usually during two to three years without actually any interest. Um, you do payments every month. You can do them in cash if you're here or you can do them by transfer. Just make sure that your bank can transfer to uh, the builder's uh, Ukrainian account in Ukrainian greenness. Once those two to three years expire, if you need still uh, time to make the payments, you can actually get a loan from the builder, but this time with interest. Uh, make sure you check with the builder upfront whether that's even a possibility, they allow it and how much the interest rate would be. Maybe in some cases it would make more sense for you to get a loan in your home country or just a loan in Ukraine because the interest rate would be lower. Just, you know, figure it out in advance. And that's it, the apartment is yours. And, you know, I wish you good luck in making those payments. So I hope this video was useful and gave you all the needed information and hopefully the motivation to get your own place in Ukraine. If so, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for new content every week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.